Dirextra Construction Business School London. I'm an engineer, I'm working in the infrastructure uh, uh, industry. I would like to submit you this uh, brief presentation about an experience then that with my the company from which I for which I work we had uh, in uh, in Malta for the construction of an infrastructure in particular for some tunnels. Uh, so, I will describe you brief you briefly what is the National uh, Flood Relief Project uh, and then I will start with the description of uh, how this project has been awarded to us uh, and how we have tried to manage the project uh, at our best. So, we will describe uh, the procure procurement system for the NFRP, that is the procurement system, system that uh, uh, Maltese, uh, the, the Maltese government has uh, put on, that is specific for Malta, but the concept behind this uh, procurement system, system are pretty general. You can consider this the, the general rule valid in Italy as uh, I think in almost all the country in the world, more or less. The concepts are very, very similar. Then the tendering process for the NFRP, the description of the, uh, the tender document that has been we, we had to, to fill and how we have prepared the tender, and then a brief description of uh, uh, the way in which we have done the project management services for, uh, for this tender. This is uh, a brief image that uh, try to explain uh, why the government of Malta have decided to uh, perform this kind of project. Now I have a video. This video has not been done by myself, uh, but has been taken from, uh, from YouTube. So at the end of the day, the video from YouTube are better than the one that I have done because... <laughs> so that is the reason by which uh, the government has decided to um, design uh, apply to EU for funding uh, and then uh, realize uh, the National uh, Flood Relief Project. <coughs> that is a uh, mm, about 50 million uh, of euro project. The problem is that in Malta when it rains uh, there is not a, a proper system for the collection of rainwater and so in a number of areas uh, we can see this kind of, uh, this ki this kind of phenomena. This was a flooding, I think, in uh, 2012, something like that, uh, when the project was not yet uh, uh, started for the construction. Then, of course, the construction of the project has taken uh, three, four years. And so in 2012, the situation was still like, like that. And so you can see that uh, the amount of water in the, in the road is pretty huge. This area it's a pretty central area, so it's, a, it's an area in which there's a number of people that is living. So this is pretty clear <laughs> what, what, was, what was happening. Was realized a network of tunnels, basically under public roads, and the purpose of the tunnels was to collect water from the road and transport the water at sea. Uh, the project has taken care of the central part of Malta. Here we can have a location of Malta, for uh, who don't know where exactly it is. It's a very small country, uh, south of Italy. And this is the area of Malta that has been uh, affected by, by, by the project. Basically, the, the project was divided in five components. This is the main component. 
All this line represents uh, uh, tunnels. These are 11 kilometers of tunnels. Then we have another couple of kilometers of tunnels here and another uh, three, three point something kilometers uh, here in, in the center part. This area that has a different color, here we don't have tunnels, we have uh, reinforced concrete culverts and uh, some bridges have been demolished and rebuilt with uh, an improved hydraulical section for the, basically that bridges had very small span and the uh, central support has been eliminated. So let's start uh, with uh, the procurement uh, system in, uh, um, in Malta. We had a brief description of the NFRP, why the NFRP has been done. I think that this is pretty clear because the images was, uh, was pretty clear. Um, the path of the tunnel, that is not so relevant for the presentation, but I think uh, you are uh, engineers, and so I think that is important to describe. And now we, now we go into the detail of uh, the, the, the presentation. We start uh, the, uh, with the Maltese public procurement system, not because uh, this is uh, of particular relevance, the system of Malta, but because this can be considered a kind of uh, system that can be applied uh, in a number of countries. For the time being, their system is uh, structured in, in this way. Basically, mm, we have three kind of contracts uh, in Malta that are works contracts, uh, so the construction of something, building, tunnels, uh, nuclear power station or whatever it is. Service contracts, uh, typical for uh, who is doing my kind of job, so design and supervision, but can be also other kind of services, I don't know, a translation service or uh, um, other, other services, and supply contracts. Supply contracts, so I don't know, sheets for uh, the, 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 the hotel or uh, other, uh, other things. FIDIC is uh, as born, uh, I think, in the 60s, uh, when a big international project uh, was developed. The ratio uh, behind FIDIC is to try to set a standard for contracts to be applied in international situation. So they have prepared a number of standards in which a very general situation are considered and that can be applied as a base for a huge number of contracts. In the National Flood Relief Project, all the tenders were issued at the cheapest. Now we are going to analyze briefly the, 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 the discounts that, uh, that has been done. And here I think it's pretty clear. Here we can see the, um, the time frame of different contracts. As I said before, we had five different contracts. One that is the, the biggest and the other one are smallest contract. Not all these contracts have started at the same time. These have started at the beginning, then another one and then another one. And this was uh, our, uh, our service contract that was supposed to uh, take care of, uh, of all the um, the, the works contract. Uh, in this process uh, were involved uh, the project manager, of course, in, that was supposed to coordinate uh, the works, uh, and the engineering staff. So the engineering staff, hydraulical engineer, geotechnical staff, and structural engineer. Uh, here is not displaced, but we can say that uh, here we have another cloud with the back office that was based in Turin and was uh, composed by other technicians, mainly engineer and geologist, uh, that uh, has helped uh, the, three, uh, the three engineers uh, in, uh, in their work. So for the validation of the project, this was the staff. Supervision of work is uh, the main part of the work, of course, the, co the construction period. In this, uh, in this part, all the staff was involved. 
project manager of course because has to coordinate and organize uh, the, the work and the services the engineering staff because every now and then some special issue was uh, arose for uh, uh, technical problems or uh, some some details and the supervision staff was the part of the staff that uh, every uh, spends basically all the day on site uh, uh, or uh, preparing reports or uh, in any case was the, the people who was taking care of the supervision of, uh, of work. And then the maintenance period. The maintenance period is a period that will last two years in which we are now because works has been completed in December 2015 so from this de December 2015 till December 2017, we are in what has been, is called the maintenance period. The maintenance period is a period in which works are completed. The infrastructure is working. <laughs> we can define this as a kind of uh, first guarantee on the fact that the works has been done correctly in the proper way. We had also design meetings in this project because we had the validation phase of the design. So the first uh, two, three months of the project was devoted to the design. And so usually every three, four weeks, uh, we had a design meeting with uh, the designer of the contractor as an interim meeting in order to check the status of the work and to see if the design, the way in which they want to perform the design was uh, considered uh, uh, fine from our end uh, or not. This was a choice that has been done at the very beginning in order to avoid to have uh, the design team working for two, three months, then the designer uh, submit uh, the documents uh, to, to the project manager uh, and the design was not uh, according to uh, the specification on the, the interpretation of the specification was not uh, uh, what was expected by the project manager or by the client. So these interim meetings uh, has been done in order to avoid the situation at the end of the project in, in which you have people that has worked a lot and the result was not satisfactory for uh, anybody. This is a typical section of the tunnel. This is the road header, that is the machinery that uh, has been used for the excavation. The road header is uh, done like that, as a head, a cutting head with a plate in the lower part. So when the, the, the cutting head is going to demolish the rock, the rock falls down. In this plate, there are a, a proper system that collect uh, the, the material and bring the material in this, uh, in this part uh, that is a conveyor belt uh, that ends up uh, at, at the back of the road header and discharge the material on, uh, on a truck. The truck goes out of the, uh, of the tunnel and discharge the material. Dirextra Construction Business School London.